You stupid bitch. Yeah. You're a stupid bitch, you stupid bitch. Welcome to another episode of Stupid Bitches Say What, the Aussie podcast about everything and nothing but always with wine and your hosts, Skyly Collett and Sean Beano Hipkins. Woo! This week, it's What's the Haps, the episode where we cover all the goings on from the previous couple of months. This time it's May and June. We're usually on our second bottle by now. <laughs> the episode where we are known to get a little more than tipsy. Some may even say slightly controversial. Stay tuned, stupid bitches. Stay tuned, stupid bitches. What you drinking for this one, Scat? Okay, so I'm drinking. Are you ready for this? A dirty, I am ready. cheap. Lindemann's Sav Blanc. Shout out to my friend Maz, which I'm going to tag her in this fucking episode, posts, whatever, tiles, um, because she doesn't listen to the fucking podcast, even though she's Rude. one of her best friends. Um, but this is her favourite bottle of wine. It's about $6. I got two of these for $12 um, oh, on the State simple. of Origin night. And this is um, the last of the bottle because I drank one and a half bottles on State of Origin night. Um, and I think it's a little bit low in alcohol because I didn't wake up with a hangover. It's okay. It's actually pretty gross, but it's all the wine that I had and I didn't want to have another Jamison's um, because I'd be shit-faced. So what are you going to drink when you've done that half bottle? Um, I'm going to have another Jamison's. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> I was starting to get worried then. <laughs> but I'm trying to pay. This is me pacing myself. <laughs> what are you drinking, pray tell, Sean Benner Hipkins? Well, before I get to that, I have to say that this was not scripted whatsoever. And as you know, I'm on a challenge at the moment. So for the first week, I thought it would be good to just have some low-cal uh, vinos, just for my first way in. And I am also drinking... Oh, shit. I am also drinking Lindemann's. Oh, fuck off. Um, what that means is that you're going to be reasonably sober by the end of this episode and I'm going to be drunk as a skunk Well, um, because I've been drinking a lot tonight. It's Friday. I've had a really tough week at work, okay? I need well, to get shit-faced. To be fair, the first bottle was 5.3 standard drinks. Which is fuck all. This one is also five standard drinks. So by the end of it, it'll be 10 standard drinks in me. So I think I may also be slightly shit faced. Um, and Jamison on the rocks will kick your ass on that every <laughs> single fucking time. But this is a Similion Similon. Oh, I Sav hate, Blanc. I hate Similion Savlongs. They're gross. Oh, but it's an early harvest. It's gross. I hate them. So that was funny that we're both doing a Lindemans, but this one cost me $12 for one bottle. I would special. never pay that for a Sermillion. I fucking hate Sermillions. They're disgusting. I'm paying fucking that for a fucking 25% less fucking booze too. <laughs> What's the um standard content, standard drinky thingy on your one? Oh, okay, on my one. Sure, I'll tell you because I think it's 7.1. Okay, but I so only that's a had standard. about this much left of it because I drank this whole one and from here to here on State of Origin night. So after State of Origin, I came home and watched Bones until two in the morning and then got up and went to work. Oh, God. So you're getting right into the Bones, aren't you? I've seen it before, but it's just one of those, you know, old faithfuls that sometimes, because I haven't seen it in years and it's just really got me going. I'm just really into it. Oh, nice. But this, um, and also when you're worried about my inebriation, um, I have also, as you know, started a challenge, as yes, I've mentioned I'm numerous aware. times on this thing yeah. now. Uh, it's He's challenging very, himself, people, challenging himself to be fit and healthy. It's just a challenge for self to lose a fucking few kilos, trust me. I'll be getting straight back onto the KFC as soon as possible. But it's... um <laughs> <Not> defeats <defensive. laughs> No, but it's very carb light. So I think it's going to hit me a lot harder than it usually <laughs> would. We've had fucking for lunch pretty much all week this week barbecue chicken wrap on a whole meal fucking wrap and one third of a cup of oats besides the fruit and veg carb 
That's the only carbs we've been having a day. So Holy shit. Even tonight, before we'd had dinner and we started recording, I was like, Penny, I think I need a piece of sourdough or something to soak it up. And all I had was a glass of milk to line my stomach. So I think I might be quite trash. I bet he was like, babe, babe, you can't. You can't. You can't have more carbs. I did did get a a little side eye of, "Mm mm-hmm, okay, you know the rules. So shut up, Penny. (laughs) So um, for our listeners... For the, as long as I've known Bino, Sean Bino Hipkins, um, he does probably a challenge or two a year. <laughs> well, look, and sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. This one we're really sort of going to give a go. It's just at a point where the excess sure. needs to go. And I then get like, that. I feel you. You know, when you get to a point too after a challenge, you can sort of maintain it for about six months. If I can do that, we want to try and fucking maintain it before we go back to Ireland. We've got oh fucking... God. We've got plans to get our face Botoxed, my lips pumped, and my body fucking shed of kilos before we go back to <laughs> Ireland for Christmas. It's been three years. We need to give them a bit of a showstopper. Of course, of course. And look, for someone who's just recently got married, I did none of that. Um, <laughs> I did no skincare regime. I did get my hair done, um, but I certainly didn't give up carbs. I probably should have, <laughs> but I did not. <laughs> oh, look, and even prior our wedding... Back in 2014, when I was probably about six kilos lighter, I um I did go to the gym, but yeah, I didn't go too hardcore on that either. And but you always go to the gym. That's very admirable. I love that about you. I walk in the mornings, although I haven't really walked in the last two weeks because I've had wedding stuff, and um, also it's been so fucking cold. And it's we've been, been freezing. The flu. Um, and like it's hard. It's, it's okay to put layers on the top, but it's hard to get more layers on your body. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What do you do? You have to go get some of those like leggings that you wear under your pants, sort of thing. Yeah. And your legs just freeze, man. And let's just say that eight degrees in the morning for a Queenslander is fucking freezing. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's a hard life. Definitely. We don't even have the clothes to actually layer ourselves up with because you never use them. We don't have the internal heating people overseas who are listening to this. It's quite freezing in my house right now. I'm wearing a scarf inside and a jacket and layers and socks and tracksuit pants and I'm <laughs> fucking cold. We're lucky we're in a unit. Um, so the, the cold does come in, but it's not too cold when you lock everything up. And thank God for carpeted floors right now. Well, I've got wood floors all yes. the way through and only one <laughs> one heater that's in because we got rid of all of our heaters when we moved from the central coast which is much colder we won't need that yeah because it was just one thing to just get rid of and they were only kmart heaters anyway um so we've got the heater that's the air con in our bedroom but it doesn't go anywhere so we just like yeah. lock the room up put the heater on <laughs> so when we go to bed it's really warm but the rest of the house is like a fucking freeze is tyler not appreciating the lack of heat uh, Tyler is wearing my Udi right now, and if you've ever owned an Udi, you'll know that they are so hot and make you so hot. Do they? Um, and they're really hard to wash because they're so huge. They have, like, a hood mm. on top, and they're very, very thick. Oversized, um, yeah. So even when I lived on the Central Coast, I only wore it a handful of times because it does actually make you quite warm. So he's sitting on the couch in my Udi. He spilled some salsa down the front <laughs> earlier when he had some tea nachos for dinner, and I was like, babe. That's I have to order. fucking watch, watch that now. What print do you have on your Udi? I have a friend's print. Oh, of course. I can yeah. see the friend's calendar in the background too. Yes, yes. I love friends. It's got, but it doesn't have their faces. It has like, you know, the turkey, um, the picture the frame, the couch, um, a couple a of. coffee things. mug. Yeah. It's stuff from the actual show, like just yeah. actual things, not the people, yeah. but I love it so much. Oh, good, good. It was a gift from Tyler a couple of years ago oh, nice. um, that he's brought... now wearing. And because he's been sick too, he's been wearing it the whole time he's been <laughs> sick. Like... So like, it's got all his sick germs on it, please. Does he have a grumpy little face in there too? Go away. <laughs> <laughs> he does not do cold well and he doesn't do heat well, heat well. and he doesn't do sickness well. <laughs> oh, bless. Um, we got my brother Lee a uh, Disney Woody for Christmas. So I hope he's working uh, that out tonight. He would love it. Mm. Queensland winters are actually probably the perfect time for an Audi because it does get quite cold and we're just not prepared. Not used to it. The rest of the year it's all about making your house heat, you know, like what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, not hot. Resilient? 
yeah, you want your house to have the cool breeze. Resistant of heat, yeah. The cold, and keep the cold in from the hot days and stuff like that. So they're built um, for the summer, not for yes, the winter. Exactly, exactly. And usually we get a week of winter and that's it. But this year, climate change is the thing, people. Uh, it's the coldest winter in over 100 years is what everybody's saying on the fucking news. God, imagine if we got snow up here somewhere. <laughs> we never amazing. would. I was talking to a lady um, the other day um, from work and she's out at Maranoa, which is sort of between, it's east from Brisbane. It's still Queensland, but it's closer to sort of Mount Isa. It's sort of inland up from Toowoomba in between like, yeah. that way. So it's about a five-hour drive from here and they have minus degrees in the morning. And I said, how fucking cold is it out there? And she's like, oh, it's like, you know, minus one or some shit like that. Jeez. And I said, so will it ever snow? And she said, it never snows. And I'm like, what's that about? Is it like the humidity that's out there, yeah. the dryness of the weather? Like, But they never get snow, but it gets fucking cold. Reason, yeah, especially out in the outbacky towns, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we might have to cut this because I was going to say something. I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> this is our shit talk episode where we just <laughs> talk shit. Yeah. It's a good one. And that's a good thing with pop culture too. That's usually a big piss-up episode where we can just be like... <laughs> um, yeah, no, I can't remember. Oh, so speaking of the different temperatures that different areas of Australia feel... Sure, sure. Jimmy Rees... The guy on um, Facebook that does oh all the POV, POV videos. Oh, my God. Did you videos. see the Boomer one that I tagged you in? Yes. How fucking hilarious was that? Uh, because he first did the one where it went through all the states about the different yes. yep. Seen things that. that happen in the states. But Not he's as done funny. One. No. Oh, I found some of them quite hilarious. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found the, um, I think the Byron Bay one and the Gold Coast one was quite funny. And I think I the one. I found the, um, I haven't seen the Byron Bay one, but I actually, I found the hairdresser one quite funny because as you, we have lots of hairdresser friends or used to yes. be hairdressers back when we were younger. So seeing all the hairdresser ones, I was yeah. like, oh my God, splinter Splintering your hell. chest, hair splintering your hair, chest that started growing, gross. A, a wardrobe of black clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they get stained with dye and bleach. Yeah, um, yeah. So if anyone hasn't seen it, look up Jimmy Rees R W -E S on Facebook. He does some fucking great videos. He but used he does... to be a kids' children's show, didn't he? On presenter, it was Giggle like and um, or something. Giggle and yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it was. But he does, um, he does one where it goes through the different towns. It's not the POV one where he's the cash register checkout person, but it's um all the different temperatures of when it's freezing, it's freezing. Darwin, 33 degrees, it's freezing. <laughs> Have you seen the packaging one where he's like the guy who decides packaging and there's the guy drinking the martini and he's asking the questions, he's like, no, cherry tomatoes, put them in a little container and put a little bit of plastic over the top. Top, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then stuff it with a whole heap of shit, yeah. <laughs> he's very good. That one's funny, I like that one. <sighs> So, yeah, so a bit of fun week, challenge-wise. Our muscles are fucking sore AF. We can't oh. reach down and do anything or stretch our arms out. It's like, ah. But one of the hot topics of the year, wedding of the year, oh, wedding of the decade, please. The wedding, my wedding, please. Yes. Down at Nora Heads, there was a few, we had a few fucking um, heavy rainfalls in the lead-up to it. Plans got changed. <laughs> We had a massive heavy rainfall on the evening. Oh, fuck. We were in the middle that of a supercell. <laughs> yeah, but luckily we we're all undercover. But everything worked out perfectly and beautifully. You put on a special, amazing day and night and weekend, to be fair. And that's really thanks to Nora Head Sporties, who, because we were previously supposed to have it in my mother in law to be, well, she is now my mother in law in her backyard. But because of the rain, her backyard was full of mud. And there was just no way that we could have it there. So then at the last minute, our reception was supposed to be at Nora Head Sporties. Yeah. Um, and she was like, we can have the wedding here. And then completely just killed it with yeah. the, Put the on a show anticipation of every need that we could ever possibly have. This lady came out with... Crystal? Um, Crystal, yeah. She came out with um, thongs, you know, like the thongs that you get with beer. They were, mm. what were they? What beer? Was it? Um, it was one of the new ones. Fucking Iron, Iron, Iron Jack. Uh, Iron Jack. Iron Jack. So when all the girls were flipping off their shoes, here she comes with all these packets of, of thongs for everyone. She was amazing. 
She was I absolutely amazing. I went home with amazing. Iron Jack thongs. I brought those Iron Jack thongs home with me just for the a memorabilia. Little yeah, yeah, I was just like, you know, I have to keep those. What an amazing event, amazing venue. Um, yeah, oh, they looked they after us you. so much. And obviously you had your dealings with her in the lead up to it. And Vinny, my husband, was the MC on the day. So and the day when we were getting ready and everything, Vinny has nothing but amazing things to say about Crystal and the way the dealings he had with her and getting everything sorted and anything that needed to be done. She was just a hundred percent on top of. Yeah. And it like literally cost me nothing because we just paid for food and she just did everything anyway, because she recognized how much business we were going to bring in for her club, a small club um, in the winter seasons on the central coast. So don't get a lot of business at that time of year. So she was like, this is going to make me a shit ton of money, which it did. And we did. Um, Good, and I we love drunk, that. We love drunk that. the bar dry, and I warned her. <laughs> I said, look, you're going to need lots of alcohol, lots of beer, and lots of Jack Daniels. And she said to me the day after, she said, people always say they drink a lot, and I always don't believe them because we run a bar. And she said, but your family and friends drink a lot <laughs> of alcohol. <laughs> she was so thankful that she ordered the extra cases of JD, even oh, though she good. didn't really believe me at the time. She was like, I'm just going to order them because we'll use them. Um, anyway, and so she did. Good to they, have. Yeah, we drank them dry, she said. Love that. I love that for them too because they deserve it after the shit that they put on for for you and Tyler's wedding. It was oh, amazing. She's brilliant. She was amazing. I love her to death. And yeah. when we go down there again for my um, niece, well, she's not really my niece, but I call her my niece, um, for her 18th and they're going to have it at the same place. We oh, is it going to be there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all going to be there. Perfect. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to grab her when she finishes and say, you have to come and have a proper drink with us. Yeah. Because we need to just get drunk yeah. with you now. <laughs> and even the cabins at the park there too were fucking, they were great. Beautiful. Like, yeah, we had and so much fun there. How close they were. We just walked over mm -hmm. and then we ended up eating there every night. Remember, we ate yeah. there Thursday oh night, Friday night, Saturday the night. Sunday night. schnitzel. Fuck me, that was delicious. <laughs> I think I had it twice, Seed didn't salad I? salad too, please. It was amazing. <laughs> I had the, and the fucking little mini cobs. Oh, oh my God. the mini cobs. Yeah. So what was your highlight of the wedding? Oh, there's so many things. Seeing Tyler's little cute face, oh, um, how nervous he was when I walked down. Having Link, my son, my 16-year-old son, my dad walked me down the aisle. It's beautiful. I loved that. Seeing all you guys up there. Um, shots in the at the end of our ceremony, although the celebrant hated us for that. Um, she really wasn't feeling our vibe at all, was she? Well, it's not her wedding, so she didn't. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> she didn't go fuck. Um, and I think I mentioned this in our last podcast, just the, the next day debrief was one of my favourite parts. Yes. My yeah. nearest and dearest just sitting around drinking beers even though we were hungover as fuck and just um, talking about all the gossip from the night before. You know what it's like when families get together yeah. and, you know, all the extra people that come along and all the things exactly. that happen. And, and it's usually the day after is usually your nearest and dearest as well. Like, you know, so you've always got just that chill vibe. You don't have the stress of the wedding or anything. So it's everyone just sitting there having a few beers, laughing, talking shit and getting drunk again. Yeah. <laughs> God, our poor fucking livers, really. I know. After I know. the hens too. Oh, we have to talk about the hens. Do you want to talk about the hens? Do you want to give a little brief summary of the hens? Well, so... Um, as one of the bridesmaids, I did um, have the responsibility of organising hens or part organising with the other bridesmaids, and it was a lot of fun. Um, as I said in the other one, which you'll hear next week or on Thursday, um, we did um, – I only had a few pieces of bread that day and then some jelly shots that were cosmos. It was a Sex in the City theme. Oh, it was so good. The so best knowing, theme ever. Yes, and Vinny came up with that theme too and I said I'd give him kudos for it. But then after he gave it the theme idea, the rest of the bridal bridal party on the hens, on the bride's side came up with all the different parts of it too. When we had the balloons and... Um, the backdrops and the, the cosmopolitan penis, jelly the shot. Penis balloon arch. Penis cutouts, the penis balloon arch. The last penis for life. What, what, what was that? Oh, yeah, same yes. penis forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, With a penis was, in the balloon. <laughs> yeah, that was through Belinda's um, stepmom, I guess, Anne-Marie, 
did a great job with getting all that sorted and too. He gave us a great price for it too. Everything just turned out so great. But then I think the whole pressure of everything, making sure everything was set up and getting the whole place organised, and then when you can just breathe, yeah. and then the alcohol hits in, and boy, did it hit. I cannot remember fucking much at all. I um I felt like Kevin Spacey with those topless waiters the next morning. Um, I thought there was going to be a Me Too movement out against me. Um, it was quite embarrassing. <laughs> um, it was embarrassing, but still a lot of fun. Um, then the jelly shot. So Vinny and I had made, we got 110 jelly shot containers, but a recipe for 90 jelly shots. And we made, filled 120 of the cups up, 110 of them, sorry, and then we had such a leftover amount, we just put it into a bowl. And we thought what we could do is just mash it up and scoop it and put it into shots and people could have that. We forgot about that. And then at the end of the night, it was very important for me to get my Tupperware that I'd left there. Which he left the lids for. He just took the bases for. <laughs> and not even all of it. And then when I went to get the jelly out, and I have no recollection of this, and I denied it when it first got mentioned to me, Someone had upended the bowl of jelly onto a paper plate, put another paper plate on top of it and put it in the fridge because it's jelly. It'll still set. Like a jelly sandwich. <laughs> and left. <laughs> and I did that to get my Tupperware bowl back, but still left that Tupperware bowl there. <laughs> in his inebriated state, he was like, I have to take the Tupperware because I'm known for stealing Tupperware, obviously. We don't live that far apart now. I know. I think because I just had so much of it. I'm like, I gotta get Ethel, gotta go. But he left his shoes. Um, he the left cake his, stand. his cake stand. His cake stand. Vinny left his jacket and also his shoes. Uh, a lot vapes. of other bits and pieces, vapes. Everything got left behind, but not without my Tupperware. Not without my Tupperware. <laughs> Tupperware. That should be a um. Oh God, what's that bitch's name? The flying nun. Oh, you're Sally Field. Not without that's, my daughter. Sally, Sally Field, baby. <laughs> Not without my Tupperware. <laughs> I fly to Iran for that shit. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah no, it was a cracker, a cracker of a night. It was. And the most important thing was that you had a cracker of a I night. I had the best time. And one of the, the things that I loved the most was that the boys were on the Bucks night at the same time. This was the weekend before the wedding, mind you. Um, and they went on a pub crawl and then there was probably about oh, 20, 25 of them and all their, most of their partners were at our house at the hen's night. So at different stages, one or two of them would catch a cab and a pee because they'd had enough <laughs> because they'd been out since 11 a.m. Mm. So then all of a sudden one or two of them were probably like, oh, my God. It was like this big <laughs> thing when they all walked in and then we'd grab them on the dance floor and swing them around and it yeah. was like this whole massive. We didn't go to bed till four. I went to bed holding a champagne a champagne bottle in my arms, fully dressed, still had my bride <laughs> tiara on my head, sitting up in my bed drinking the champagne, and I passed out like that. Um, I think I had a vape in the other hand. I had a vape in one hand, a champagne in, in one, shoes still on. Veil on. Um, veil on, <laughs> yes. And someone obviously came and went, oh, we better take that off. <laughs> and you're like, nah. <laughs> we She's left. asleep now. <laughs> no, no, left. scuzzy. At about 12, I think, and ended up paying $165 for an Uber home. <laughs> but he didn't check, obviously, just booked the Uber. And no wonder it came. Usually they cancel at that time of night down in Birkdale. And to put it into perspective, it would usually be a $50 ride, but it was $160. We, dis we considered disputing the fare, but then after thinking about it, we were like, you know what? It was probably worth 160 bucks to get me out of there at that state. <laughs> Even though I did get Sky going, this is my hen start. I'm, like, I'm sorry, I gotta go. Yeah, you're dead to me. You're fucking dead to me. <laughs> I think I've got a court park. case coming in the morning. I've got to go prepare. <laughs> but, you know, the waiters, because um, they stayed for, I didn't realise, they went to leave at 8 o'clock. Oh, my God, they didn't leave till, like, 11, 11.30. I think they, I think they left maybe about 10.30, 11, yeah. And um, he texted me the next day saying, thanks so much. We had a great time. If you ever need a stripper slash waiter again, let us know. And I was like, how's Friday? <laughs> <laughs> one of them was thoroughly enjoying himself. The other one, on the other hand, was like, Meh, I'm out. Yeah, These the bitches are old. <laughs> the blonde guy, yeah. We're doing vapes at the back of their pants and that, do you remember? Oh, had their vape messy. stuck in their pants, yeah. It was so messy. Oh, uh, and there was a lot of balloon penises around, and oh. those balloon penises ended up in people's pants with them getting 
um, doing actions with said balloon penis, and that was not me. I, I had about 20 people stay at my house that time, that night Jesus. on top of us, and then in the morning there was just bodies everywhere. Yeah. Um, and, and every single person was literally dying, like, on their uh, deathbed yeah. from a hangover, like, you know, just – and then I was <laughs> like at one point, okay, team effort, let's clean up. And even I totally while they're there. Team effort of cleaning up, it was still annihilated. My house is the trashiest it's ever been in my house. And my son who decided to stay, he went to his mates and came back um, in the morning was just disgusted. He was like, Mum, this is disgraceful. And I said, son, don't ever live in a share house. And then I yeah. actually said, oh, my God, actually, I lived in a share house and we never trashed a house the way my friends trashed a house. <laughs> <laughs> then he did say, you know, because remember all the parties would have at East Brisbane in that little, in the shitty little kitchen. Now would have dishes piled everywhere. He goes, <laughs> it's good to get away. <laughs> yeah. Leave it for someone else. <laughs> no, it was a great night. Great weekend, too, the following one. All right. So talking about weddings, um, someone super famous got married this week. Um, oh, pray I, tell who? I feel like she's obsessed with me and just copying everything that I do of. Yeah. Um, but it's Britta's. Britney Spears got married. Um, so it was a big event. Well, now that she's out of her conservator, does she, she, she I know. <laughs> she's just been kicking goals all over the place, hasn't she? So she got married. Um, Drew Barrymore was there. Oh. Donatella Versace was there. She made the dress. Uh, Paris Hilton was there, Madonna was there, uh, none of her family were there. There was talk of her brother being there, but I'm not sure if that actually eventuated, but certainly not her sister or her parents. They were not invited. Not surprised about um, the parents. Kids so weren't there. The kids. No, they weren't there. And then there was a lawyer statement from KFED, Kevin Federline, but oh, right. he used to go at one time as KFED when he was a yes. rapper. Do you remember those days? Yeah, his backup, her um, backup dancer. When he got famous because of her and then went out on his own career after they got divorced and stuff and was KFED. Yeah. Um, so there was a statement from his lawyer saying that they wanted the day to be about Britney, so they thought it was best that they didn't go. He, um, so he has the kids' custody. I think they have Absolutely. an arrangement where she's allowed to see them a certain time, like maybe every second weekend or something like that, but he has the full custody and has done for years and years and years. Yeah. He's remarried. He's got a couple more kids, I think, as well. Um, He's a bit of a breeder. So they weren't there. Um, but the drama thing, which I was like, oh, Britta's, you're all about the dramas. Um, so the original guy that she married and she got the annulment, remember when she married that guy that she knew from school yeah, in, in Vegas, Vegas and they were yeah. married for like 48 hours or some shit and then they got the annulment and yada, yada, yada. So he rocked up on the day and was like crashing the wedding. He was like, oh, so he wasn't even invited. No, he wasn't invited. He was like, I'm here to crash the wedding, and he got arrested. He went to her house and got into her house before security stopped him. Jesus. And was like, where's Brittany? Uh, and there's all these She's videos. making a terrible mistake. There's all these videos <laughs> of him, like, coming in going, where the fuck's Brittany? Um, and then they took him out. Like, they tackled him in the front yard and stuff, and the police got called, and he got proper arrested. Jesus. And he was like, I'm here to crash the wedding. <laughs> you don't usually announce that, do you? Just crash it. All about the drama, but go Brittany, go mm. Brittany, go. It's go your birthday. Brittany. It's your wedding day. She's a married woman once again. I and wish her all the at... the luck in the world. Is she pregnant, or is she going to get pregnant? No, she was pregnant. She lost the baby. Oh, bless. Yeah, I know. It's quite sad. Mm. Um. So yeah, but she's gone on and got married to the guy. So you know, I hope. Hopefully it's all rainbows in her future and locked yes. up stuff. And I think he's another backup dancer. But they've mm. been together for years, I believe, like yes. at least over five. They just were never allowed to get time. married, were they? Yes, just the correct. Conservative yeah. ship, 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 ship. Which you may remember I had trouble talking about mm. in our other What's the Haps episode. In I, do last year. I do recall. I do recall. Well, speaking of weddings, um, you may remember there was a, a divorce that turned into quite the court case between oh. Amber Heard and Johnny Depp recently. Oh, my God, who doesn't know about that fucking know. train to be, wreck? To be honest, I hadn't really followed much of it when it was going on because it went on for over a month. Well, if you look on any Facebook feed, you'll see about 800,000 people in the world who follow it very, very closely and all on Johnny Depp's side. I think that they're both fucked. Yeah, um, I agree. 
And I think that it's an awful situation. And if you really, 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 really wanted to move on your, with your life, you certainly wouldn't take each other through court, no matter how horrible they'd been to you. Yes. Certainly not for money. They weren't going to get any sort of, you know, criminal conviction out of the yeah. trauma that they've been through through court. It was all about money. It and was. that just makes me think that they're both just even yucker than all the court case made them out to be. So and so it started because um, Depp filed to do defamation case mm-hmm. against her over an editorial that she wrote for the Washington Post about surviving She's domestic violence. Battered wife, yes. That's right. And while she never mentioned Depp directly, it was just insinuated heavily that he was the one she was referring to. Look, it's given so, us a lot of memes. It's given us a lot of memes. Plenty of memes. A lot, a of, lot of funny emojis. videos. So he was suing her for 50 million US, which she then counterclaimed for 100 million. Um, Because he also apparently lost a lot of movie opportunities because with Pirates, he wasn't re put in as Jack Sparrow. And also the um, Harry Harry Potter Potter. franchise. Yep, yep. Yes. So they wanted, there was a lot of uproar when it first came out about her editorial that he was still appearing in the Harry Potter franchise. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, yep. fant- the Fantastic Beasts movies, but there were six weeks of testimonies, with sixty-one hours granted to each side, which is fucking a lot. Yeah. Um, that's what money gives you. That's what money, because a normal do- what, divorce proceeding in Australia would never ever entertain that. any of that drama. No exactly. way. And it gave him the his opportunity apparently to air his narrative of their fifteen-month love to hate marriage. And it also gave... And they hated each other's guts, didn't uh, they? Yeah. The, the shit that how, they were... How much hate they had towards each other is just horrible. Yeah. And it's like it gets to a point where I think in those relationships, when you, when you do despise someone so much that any emotion that you get from them is the emotion, is a reaction that you're looking for, you know? And she apparently... I don't know. Like... A, a, a person who wants to move on with their life just leaves the money and runs. Plus a lot of drugs and alcohol mm. abuse. Oh, uh, because <laughs> I have to say, because I, I, I will talk about this later on the podcast because it's one of my topics tonight, um, the Marvel movies. So Paul Bettany is one of the main characters in some of the more recent Marvel movies. And now every time I see him, I just think of him getting super fucked up on drugs because he was named in a lot of the yes. the evidence um, with Johnny Depp and a lot of the text messages. So he's That's the right. guy who plays um, Vision in the Marvel movies. Oh, and, um, is yeah, that- that's Paul Bettany, previously married to I think Kate Beckinsale or maybe it's Jennifer Connelly. I always get those two confused. But um, so he is quite a party dog. I love that. And he's, um, he's, hang on, so who's his wife? Jennifer they're Connelly. Not mar- Jennifer, that's it. They're not oh, married anymore. Um, from Labyrinth. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and he was born. He's like six years, he's over 50 as well. I love mm. that for him. Anyway. Uh, he's, he's very good looking. He's aged quite well. I'll give Party him that old vision. Mm, yeah, party never does. So I've got a couple Party of. Party dogs unite. Yeah, so I've got a couple of statements from the case that I've picked out. Um, Let's hear him. You may cut some if it goes on too long. But some of the things that did come out, so Depp said he painted with the blood on his finger after it was cut during a fight with her. Yeah. So when they were in Australia in 2015, she apparently threw two bottles of vodka at him and one exploded and sliced his finger to the point where bone was exposed. Yeah. He claimed it resulted in the tip of his middle finger being cut off. After being cut, he wrote on the walls in the blood and then dipped his finger in paint to keep writing. It said, the blood has dried, as it were, and so I stuck my finger into a can of paint and also mineral spirits to put my verbal messages on the wall. You've got to be really fucking high to do that, don't you? I and I mean, obviously, Depp is quite an eccentric, eccentric person. Mm, flamboyant in lots of ways. That's part of who he's always been. He was with Winona Ryder for a long time. Well, and didn't they had Winona Forever and then he changed it to Wine Forever yeah, as a tattoo? Yeah. Far from his 21 Jump Street days. <laughs> um, <laughs> he loves a party on Johnny, uh, mate. He also wrote on a lampshade a photo and a photo of which was a photo of which was shown during the trial. And on the lampshade, he wrote, "On this lampshade, which appears to be sitting on the ground, you write in some mixture of blood or paint, 
good luck and be careful at top. I don't know what that means. And then the lawyer asks, did you write that? And he says, yes, correct. I thought it was good advice. Good luck and be careful at top. <laughs> There's videos that were shown of him and heard, argue, heard arguing during which he becomes aggressive. Um, and he's seen pouring wine while angrily asking, want to see crazy? I'll give you fucking crazy. I got you crazy. Oh, you're crazy. And that's actually a womanizer song. You want it crazy? I got you crazy. Brittany, womanizer, womanizer. <laughs> he then notices that she's recording and he tussles with her, which the video I've then cuts one, off. Yeah. Deb confirmed to the lawyers during the question that it was him in the video. And it was as West at his West Hollywood home. And you would agree that you were violent in that clip, correct? The lawyer asks. He responds, clearly I was having a bad time, Deb replied. He said, heard allegedly re illegally recorded him, adding, I did assault a couple of cabinets, but I did not touch Miss Heard. Mm. When, if, when asked if he was drunk during the video, when it was taken, he said, the, the lawyer said to him, it was possible that um, you poured yourself a mega pint of red wine, correct? Mega he pint. replied, oh, a we've mega been pint. There. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He replied, a mega pint. I have a I mega poured whiskey myself right a large now. glass of wine. I thought it was necessary. There was um, texts. So one of the one from his from Depp to Paul Bettany, where he oh, revealed. Oh, horrible! I know. He this told week. the actor about an occasion where he drank too much around Heard. Heard's lawyer read the text out loud. You may have to drink for me. Depp wrote to Bettany. I, of course, pounded and displayed ugly colours to Amber on a recent journey. Journey. I am an insane person and not so fair-headed after too much of the drink. Weed, pills, fine. Booze, my capacity is too large and won't stop. Ugly and sad. Oh, how I love it. He's quite poetic, isn't he? It's like very fucking like... Um, um, he's been in the limelight since he was a baby. Like yes. he is literally knows how to play in the media like nobody's business. There's no one who is more, you know, experienced in how to pit the media Take against drugs. themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so he said another one he sent to his sister. Um, oh, no, to someone he called Sis who may have been her sister. I never want to lay eyes on that filthy whore, Amber, a most embarrassing. And when the lawyer said to him, are you referring to Amber as the filthy whore? This was at the time of she was your wife, correct? He says, yes, sir. Um, apparently Elton John tried to get him to go sober mm -hmm, mm -hmm. during it. And then of course we have Poo Gate, yeah. where um, Depp said, while Heard was at Coachella, he decided to go to a penthouse they shared and pack things when she wasn't at home. His bodyguard had warned him fecal matter was found left in the bed. That was an absurd and grotesque and cruel. And then I was shown a picture of what the problem was. He said her kept trying to deny it, blaming it on their small dogs, but he convinced she was lying. The thing that um, this has stirred up, I've seen in some um, media too, because obviously, through most people's reaction is they are team Depp and her mm. has been copping a lot of shit, no pun intended, about <laughs> this. Um, but there's obviously, it seems like there's abuse on both sides. Incredible aggression towards each other. Incredible yes. aggression. Yeah. So we know that there's been a few reboots of um, series coming out recently. Mm hmm so um first of all do we want to talk about the new one that i tagged you in on facebook the other night Ooh, the new hunger games the new reboot. Hunger games that you oh, just that... realized was a prequel yeah so we just so songbirds and snakes because i was wondering when i saw it i thought how are they doing this is this going to be afterwards i thought the capital had come down what's going on mm -hmm. are they thinking that they're going to have to do it again blah 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 but it is it's a prequel and they've got their new Cornelius Snow, Coriolanus. What's mm -hmm. his name? Coriolanus Snow. Um, I forgot. So, we were obsessed with the books when they came out. But like I said to you before, this was us about 15, 20 years ago. Because I think I sent you the book. I think I like. You actually, told me to get onto it. I was in New Zealand. 
That's right. That's how yes. long ago it was. Yeah. And then we were obsessed with it. We loved all the books. We watched all the movies. Mm. But now we are a lot older people and yeah. it's very Tina Popper-ish. Like it's not our thing anymore. So that's why we probably don't know that there's been prequels. Yeah. And so. To be so, young adult, to be tagged as young adult stuff. Yeah. I'd still probably, I don't know if I'll go to the cinema to see it, but I'll still definitely watch it. Yes. But apparently it's set decades before the events of the Hunger Games books that we've read. And the story takes place around the tenth annual Hunger Games. Um, ah. Yeah, so that'll be it'll be interesting. So Snow is eighteen years of age when he's picked to be a mentor for one of the female tributes for District Twelve, much to his disdain. Right. Okay. So it's a similar storyline then. So it'll be the whole obviously. Yep. You go in and blah blah blah. So District Twelve. That's where um. What's her name? The songbird, the mockingjay oh, came from. Darling, I couldn't tell you. It's been a long time since I've seen, I've read the books and saw the movies. So um, I remember loving them intensely. Yes. I love Jennifer Lawrence. I just think she's the best. Um, but I can't really recall the details. Katniss Everdeen. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I District wonder... 12 sounds familiar. Or yeah, is it just... District 13? Yeah, actually, District 13. She is District 13, so it won't yeah. be because there's only been one ever previous winner from there, which was Woody Harrelson's. That's right. I or maybe Woody another Harrison one. Woody Harrelson was in it. I fucking yeah. love Woody Harrelson. So, um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it is. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but also there's a reboot of Buffy coming out. Did you know about this? I did know about that, yes. I, it, it started, then stopped, and started, then stopped. So... I made Lola watch my niece. Lola watched um, the movie a couple of weeks ago before the wedding. She came over for a sleepover. And I, she loves it when I pick really old movies for her. Mm -hmm. um, and she's always like, Doi, pick me a really good old movie. And she always loves my old shit. And it was the same night we watched Mrs. Winterborn, which is where my... Oh, my God. Yeah, which is the Ricky Lake movie. And yeah. Have you seen Mrs. Winterborn? Oh, uh, look, I, that would have been the 90s movie, was it? Yes, and it's Maybe still, back then, but I don't recall it. I think it still really holds up. Like, I watched it, uh, and I hadn't watched it in years and years and years since I was very young, and I remember my mum making me watch it because she really loved it, and Lola loved it. And then we watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer as well, the movie. Oh, yeah. Because then I said to her, How there's loose, a whole... Here she gives. Yeah. How loose, here she gives. How it's funky still is your chicken. Up. It's the I loved best movie that. ever. Luke Perry, may rest in peace. When it came out, I was obsessed with it, and I was probably oh, 11 or 12, I think, when it came out, and I remember the girl who lived two houses up from me who I was best friends with, we used to um, watch it so many times that we knew all the phrases, so we used to quiz each other and say who said it. Like we'd say <laughs> a phrase and we'd have to de decide who said it. So we knew every word of the song, and I watched it with Lola, and I was like, I know every word that's going to happen. I was like, blah, 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 blah. And she was like, Doi, how do you know all this? And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's what we did before phones and internet. Yes. From yeah. really younger. Uh, and before Netflix and all that shit. Yeah, you had one movie us... and you watched it over and over again. Yeah. And Donald Sutherland, who is Snow. I love Donald. He's in that as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's amazing in it. He's yeah. the um, watcher, I think. Mm. Um. It's yeah, a, no, that is a great watcher, movie. Yeah, and it's a great movie. I so, remember. look, if they're redoing it again, I think it's like it's so many stuff. Like they redid Anna Green Gables um, and it's oh, all yeah. so young based. So back in the 90s when they would redo stuff, it was still edgy enough that you could enjoy it. Now it's all like CW and Disney and stuff yeah. and it's all just PG all the way. Like, yeah. will I watch it? Probably not unless I'll, someone tells I'll me it's see. amazing. Because I didn't get into Buffy until I was in London, the TV series. But I did watch the movie. I remember when you got into Buffy. Oh, my God. I got full into it. Um, I remember watching the movie with Belinda Bosart when we were at, when I was, we were in, still in high school. I think we were in grade 12, uh, which was 94 or 93 in grade 11. And, um, yeah, we were playing Uno. And we are doing, whilst we were playing Uno, we are going, how loose is your goose? How loose is your goose? How, how funky, funky is your chicken? chicken? How, how funky, funky is, is your chicken? chicken? How loose is your goose? And, um, and then, yeah, my friend, that my roommate's girlfriend in London, Gemma, 
we um she got me into the Buffy series. And I remember being on when I lived over in Australia, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I never really watched it or anything like that. But fuck me. It. I was episode for episode and I'd really like to do the journey. I haven't done but all you never of Angel. Got Angel, did you? No. I, oh, I, I did Angel the first was the season one. of Angel. Angel um and the, the guy one. that was in Angel was actually in Roseanne, the original series. He was um Yes, the one who died in Becky's and then he had a heroin overdose, I think. Yes. Becky's boyfriend. Yes. I can't remember what his name is, but he was um the brother of the one that Darlene went out with as well. Yes, I know exactly who you're talking. So David Baranis is the main character in Angel, who's also one of the main characters Bains. in Bones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when I was watching Buffy with Lola recently, I was like, her style is still I, like I remember when I was watching it when I was young. I just thought everything that she wore was insane, and I wanted to look yeah, like her. The I wanted jacket. to be like her, and um. Watching it again, I was like, oh, my God, Lola, I just want every single one of her outfits. And Lola was like, are you serious? I was like, yes. If I could just <laughs> look like her and wear every single one yeah. of those outfits. I, and she was like, are you serious? I was like, love <laughs> Damn it. Damn straight I am. Um, yeah, I liked it. When, when did Hope come into it? Hope was, was Hope the, she Probably was the other slayer. three-ish. Yes. And she was in yeah. Bring It On as well. And I quite yes. liked her. And then, but season five was the one that just fucking floored me with Glory, the demigod that was sort of trapped in the male. There was a male, female. It was like, she's coming, she's coming, she's here. Yeah. Yeah, I loved that. Um, so um, the chick who played Hope, she had her own couple of series as well that I was really into uh, as well. Dollhouse? Yeah, and then there was another one where she was a fighter and it had the guy out of um, Supernatural in it as well. Okay. Maybe it was the dollhouse, but she was in a few. No, it wasn't dollhouse. It was the one where she saw dead people. Because was dollhouse she... a bit cloney? Dollhouse was a bit cloney. It was a bit sci-fi, but then there was another series that she was in where she saw dead people, and um, that was really good too. But, again, I was a teenager, so it's hard to say if I'd enjoy it now. We had less options as well back mm-hmm. then. Exactly. But, yes, yeah. I love Buffy. I, I watched the series probably three or four times over. Angel used to watch it all the time, and I see it on Disney all the time, and I think I probably wouldn't do Buffy again, but I'd definitely oh, I do Angel again. Yeah, I see, and that was the thing. Like, I thought with um, Buffy, I tried to – I went to redo it, but there's just so much shit out there to keep watching. Oh. Um, and as per my OCD, I have to do everything from the very start again. I'm exactly the same. I yeah. cannot jump in halfway no. through. And the first season of Buffy was okay. That was with the old vampire, wasn't it? Did Spike come into it in season two or three? I think he came in at the end. Yeah. Um, and then he chopped it and out for a bit for a few seasons and had some storylines, and then he became a main character. Yes, and I loved his girlfriend, the one that was crazy. Drusilla. Drusilla. Oh, my God, I loved yeah, her. Yeah, she was great. And also the blonde one who David uh, Angel was, um, what was her name? The blonde one. Drusilla and her were together. Um, no, no, in Buffy, the blonde, really attractive one. And uh, she's also the chicken Dexter. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Julie Benz, I think her name is in real life, but I yeah. can't think of who she was, but she was the love interest of Angel when he was bad. Mm. In the when Buffy. He was a nasty vampire. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, they were very good. And jealous. And jealous he was. Yes, yes. Um, one other final reboot that I want to talk about that's coming out this year is A League of Their Own TV series. Oh, and it's got the chick from um, the chick that we love from what's that show with the two chicks? <laughs> the crazy one. Um, oh, um, when they smoke weed all the time and they get fucked up. Broad. Broad City. Broad City. Yeah, it's got the other one. She's oh, one it's... of the main characters. So is it? It's not Kelly McCormack, no. no. It's also got, did you ever watch um, The Good Life? No, The Good Place? Yes. It's got the chick who's, uh, you know, the robot that appears oh, all I the time. I love her. She's yeah, great. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in it. Abby Jack- Jacobson. Ab- Abby Jacobson, that's it. Yeah. She's the other chick with the longer hair, not the short yes. hair. Uh, although Alana with the short hair is my favourite in Broad uh, City. Yeah. They're both but, hilarious. I yeah. still have to watch the last season of that. Oh, I haven't seen season either she comes out in the last season you know oh really yeah 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 because so, I got Maz onto it and then Maz went ahead because I think I, I they stopped showing it on Stan or something they put the last you know how they do that sometimes they put the last season on a different yeah streaming thing and yeah. I never got to it yeah no I've um, got to watch it I think they're all on Stan 
I um, love but Broad do you City. remember the movie A League of Their Own? Yes. I was obsessed with it. I watched really? that. That was one I would watch over and over again. And I remember watching it again, maybe for the fifth time. And John had my stepfather saying to me, you know, she drops the ball at the end. Because I'd seen it so many times. I was like, you know, she doesn't catch it at the end. She still drops it. I'm like, I know, but I just love it. Because Rosie O'Donnell's in it. Madonna's in it. Fucking Kit. Oh, I loved it. So apparently, I haven't seen that forever. I'm, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna have to watch it because I remember loving it, but it was probably when it first came out the last time I saw it. Yeah, I haven't. I, look, I probably haven't seen it for ten years either. But do you remember Mirtha? Is it Mirtha? Um, mm-hmm. I don't remember any. She of was I the one who had Madonna the power ball. In it, and I remember She's, Rosie O'Donnell being in it. That's all I remember. That, there was that one chick who wasn't the most attractive, but she threw, had a good arm on her. And who was the guy? Tom Hanks was in it, wasn't he? Tom Hanks was it. They're still crying in baseball. It's a crying in baseball. Because so all the men went to war and yes. then they had to, like, The Rockford the Peaches team. and shit yeah. like that, yeah. So apparently the series follows brand new characters and begins with the formation of the league in 43 and follows the league and its players as they fight to keep alive through close games, injuries, sexual awakenings. Great storyline. And road trips across a rapidly changing US. Yeah, so I think it'll be quite good. Ooh. I need a good new show. Yes, yes. Um, and we also, I want to sit down and watch with you because I know you haven't watched it, Girl Interrupted. Oh. So maybe we'll have a movie day and we'll watch A League of Their Own and Girl Interrupted. So talking about movies, one thing that I have done recently, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory, okay? So Tyler wanted me to sit down and watch um, not the one that's at the cinema, is about oh, to the cinema. Spider-Man. No, the Thor. The Thor that's about ah, to come yes. to the cinema. He was like, it's love and love and something or whatever. It's about to come out in a couple of months yeah. or a couple of weeks or something. That's where anyway, the girl so, becomes Thor. Yes, and he wanted me to see the first Thor, I mean, not the first Thor, the four, Thor 3, because Ragnarok. he wanted to watch it. Yes, because he loves the Thor. And Link is the same. Like, between Link and Tyler, I'm just constantly having them at me about how amazing the males are, right? And I just have never gotten it. I once took Jackson, which is Beck's son, when he was very, very young, and he's like 24 now. I once took him to see um, the Iron Man 2, and it's because oh, yeah. that's what he wanted to see when he was very young and it first came out. And I was like, I hate this movie. This movie is yeah, shit. I didn't so get I into took Iron him Man either. Because he wanted it, and I was like, you know what? And occasionally I've seen one or the others, but I'm all like, ugh, it's shit. Oh, I've, I took Nan to see the Marvel, the Endgame and the Affinity War, Affinity oh, yeah. Wars first and the Endgame, because she loves them too. She lo- My Nan wow. fucking loves Chris Hemsworth. Like insane. I'm not. I'm not partial. I'm not a fan. Like oh, I like tap it. Ugh, it's not my thing. I don't like guys like that. It's too many muscles. But my Ned, she fucking loves him, and she loves the guy and um, the Aquaman guy. The one. Oh, Jason like, Momoa. Yeah, see, I'm not oh into him. Oh my I think he's a, god, yeah. my Ned is like, oh, he's such a handsome man. I he's liked so him. Good looking. I liked him in um Game of Thrones, but I didn't really dig him after that. Can't act for shit. I'll tell you what, I've seen that bed. It's fucking shit. I hated it. Anyway, so I've seen a few of them periodically because other people have made me see them. And then Tyler one night was like, oh, let's watch this Thor. And Link was like, let's watch this Thor. And I was like, I can't do it because we started the movie and it was talking about older movies. I was yeah. like, eh, 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 I hate getting in in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Get so that. I said, if you really, really, really want me to do it, I have to start from the beginning. And Tyler's like, there's 27 movies, Sky. And this is before the new Doctor Strange. This is yeah. before for a couple of the more recent ones. And he was like, there's 27 movies. And I was like, if it means that much to you, let's start from the beginning. So we went all the way back in the timeline order, not the released order. Yes. Yep. So we went, we started with Captain America, right? So we probably started it maybe a couple of months ago. We've done the 27 movies. We're oh, wow. up to, we've passed, and I'd already seen Infinity War and Endgame, but both the times I saw them, I was like, ugh. You had to ugh. watch them in contact. But now that I've watched them from the beginning, um, I was very much into Infinity War and Endgame way more than I was the first time that I saw them, even though I'd seen them before. But we went from the beginning, and there's heaps that I'm not really fussed on, but I'll tell you yep. the fucking ones that I love. Black Widow, 
I love okay. Scarlett Johansson. I've always loved Scarlett Johansson and everything that she's done. But Black Panther, have you seen Black Panther? Mm. We oh. went to the cinema and saw that one. Same thing, like we've seen sporadic ones and there's been some great ones, some, uh, but yeah, Black Panther was very good. And um, so was Black Widow. Like, and I can't believe that it's over for her. Like that makes me really fucking sad because she's the best character, I think, through it all. Um, okay, not the best. She's one of my most favourites. Yeah. But... We did the Hulks. We did the Hulks in order when the original Edward Norton Hulk, we did that as well. We went through the whole thing. And there was times when it was really challenging for me. I was like, I don't know if I can keep going on. Yeah. But uh, Doctor Strange, the first Doctor Strange, I fucking loved. Have you seen that? No. I've had it on the background because I tried to do the same thing, start watching them in the timeline order. And I did that with Captain America. Iron Man kind of threw me a bit. I didn't. I'm not an Iron Man fan. I've never been an Iron Man fan. I didn't get the hype about all the those movies. Yeah. No, and I'm not. I'm still not a massive fan of the Iron Mans. But so, how many have you done from the beginning? Have you done Captain Marvel? Uh, yeah, I did watch her, but that was one when I was on the phone. I'm scrolling on the phone. That's the chick, isn't it? Yes, I love in the nineties. Until I got really embedded in the body of it, Captain Marvel was one of my actual favourites. So was Captain America. Um, now I think it's a toss. I love Ant-Man. Oh, my I God. I do like Ant-Man. Yeah, I've watched Ant-Man and Ant-Man and Wasp. That's and cool, set in San Fran. Every time Paul Rudd comes into it, and the fact that he came into it in Infinity War um, yeah. was just, no, he came into it in Endgame, really, didn't he? Oh, I because say. he disappeared, because he disappeared. But um, I do actually really rate the Marvel movies. Um, maybe not so much as Tyler and Link do, but yeah. and they all disagree with me on my favourites. Like Link's like, you like all the shit ones. Oh, Marvel. I like Ant Man too, and Ant Man and Wasp. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Ant Man and Wasp is the one that finishes where he disappears and he's in there for five years in yes. the the sub crazy stuff thing. Yeah. and then he just gets pushed out accidentally because of time shit and whatever and then he really reignites the whole thing no he comes in at end game that's what it is because he's the one who comes in and goes guys fucking sort your shit out let's fix it yeah. and and um, the other ones i love is um guardians of the galaxy oh yes that i love the guardians of the galaxies both of those yeah but because i'd seen um, Infinity War and Endgame, I remember at times just on my phone, like with my nan watching it going, this is a really fucking long movie and I'm yeah. so over it. And I'm not a fan of Tony Stark. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm the same. And then when he died, I was like, eh. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I get it. I yeah. get it. I was and I, sad and stuff. And I don't mind the new Spider-Man ones either. I love the new Spider-Man ones. Yeah. I love them. But you've got to really do it from the timeline, I think, from the very beginning, that Disney thing where they have the timeline. Yes. And watch the end credits and all that. Yeah. And Tyler always makes me watch the end credits. He knows exactly where they are. He fast forwards because there's always two end credits. There's normally not an end game, I think. In end game, there was no end credits. Right. Because, no, Infinity War. Because they all disappeared in dust at the end of Infinity yes. War and they didn't want you to know what was going to happen next and it was all protected information and stuff like that. But um, Black mm. Panther is just the best ever and um, he's dead now. Yeah, I know. Oh. Cancer. It breaks my fucking But they're, going, they're still doing a sequel to it too, aren't they? And the, one of the girls is going to become the Black Panther. I hope it's a sister because she is the best. Was she I the one that was behind the whole her. computer stuff? Yes, the yeah. sister. She was the best. I loved her. And then when I saw Endgame, after I'd seen it before, I was just like all the way like just cheering like, what? What? Yeah, because yeah, they come oh running into God. it, don't they? Yeah, yeah. The ending is insane. And then I was saying to Tyler, the money they would have had to put mm. into it to create it all. All those is, effects. Is, no, well, just the actors. The and that too, actors yeah, yeah, there. yeah. But Hulk's my favourite too. I love Hulk. Oh, really? I just, Bruce Banner, love him. Love oh, him cool. all the time. He's just the cutest. I just want to like, <laughs> love his hug. <laughs> A big hug. And I love, I love Hawkeye too. Yeah. So have you watched the TV shows that interact into it? No. 
I said to Tyler, I'm not doing any of the TV shows. And he's always like, oh, we need to watch this TV show. To yeah, yeah. Because it's like, because this puts in, this like uncovers this bit and this uncovers this bit and this. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not doing the TV shows. Yeah. I'm doing the movies. Yeah, and that's fair it. enough. Because it's like Star Wars now too. They've got the Star Wars movies and now they've got the TV shows that tie into it as well. I'm just like, wow. And I did, the, I did the whole Star Wars stuff and I was like, the ones that I loved, Tyler and Link both hated. And I was like, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> I can't win. They're like, well, you hate the shit ones. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I like the ones with a good story. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got what the new Thor coming out. That yeah, you're prepared now. You're all up to date and ready to see. But I haven't seen the new Doctor Strange either, and I absolutely loved the first Doctor Strange because how it starts is insane. And I was like, it's got so much good storyline. Like the storyline for Doctor Strange is so honestly, watch it. Okay. Because he's oh, well. a doctor and he's like cocky as shit, and oh, what happens to him is insane. What happens to him? Vinny and I really got into X-Men yes. when we were in Manila. We got right into that, which surprised me because Vinny doesn't usually like that type of stuff. Um, but the X-Men, last, the last movies of those have just been very shit. ordinary. Yeah. yeah. So we've done the X-Men. I used to love X-Men, the original X-Mens. I loved them, but they just got a little bit too crazy for me, I think. Yeah. But I might try them again. Yeah. I might watch a um I might see if I can pop on a Doctor Strange tonight. Or even oh. actually start go back to where I was at in the timeline. And see where were you at in the on. timeline though? I know I did I did American Captain America. Oh yes. I did Iron Man one and two. Let me just I always the enjoy that I always enjoy the Captain do it on the Disney website. Yeah. It does it perfectly in order. Um, oh, so it's America and then Captain Marvel next. Yes. Yes. And I did so, watch that because that's with the cat. Then Iron Man 1 and 2. I may have gotten up to, oh, no, I did Incredible Hulk. I did Thor. I did the Avengers. I did Thor Dark World. And then I quite enjoyed Iron Man Thor 3, Dark World. I think I did. I think I got up to Ameri Winter Soldier maybe. Winter Soldier's great. I actually really enjoyed Winter Soldier. Yeah, and I didn't really get into Age Avengers, Age Vulture. No, I think I've done them. And I think I'm up to Civil War. Civil War's great too. It's really good. Because that's when Spider-Man comes into it too, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. Is that his first one? And Ant-Man's in um, Civil War too. I love Ant-Man in Civil War. That's in chronological order, yeah. Ant-Man's in Civil War, yes. And then Black Widow. And then Spider Man Homecoming. Black, Black Widow Man. was great. I'm so devastated that she's not in it anymore. I'm just absolutely devastated over it. And then what about Eternals? That's in there too. Oh, so we've got to go through the Shane Chai one next, the one with um, Doctor Shang Strange's. And um, the Legend of the Ten Rings, yeah. So we've got to do Shang Chai or Shang Shui, whatever it is, and then the Eternals. Yes. And then we'll do the new Doctor Strange, I think. Yeah, because you would. Because Spider-Man No Way Home, that came out before Legend of the Ten Rings, didn't it? But it's not available on Disney because someone else brought the fucking rights to it. I think Binge. Oh, Spider-Man? Yeah, so I've done That's the... usually owned by, I think that's owned by Amazon or Yahoo or something. Because there was a big, oh no, Sony. Sony owned the rights to Spider-Man because that's all they bought because they didn't think anyone would like the other ones. And then Disney must have bought Marvel. And so there was a t time when they didn't think that Spider-Man was going to continue in the format it did. Mm -hmm. But then Sony and Disney reached an agreement and allowed the new movie to happen. Yeah. I love this. I've only seen the third Spider-Man. I haven't seen the two. I haven't before. seen the first two. Yeah, no, they're no. quite good. Yeah. Um, and another one, Spider-Man to watch, is uh, is an animated one. It's called Into the Spider-Verse. I've seen that. I love it. That love was great. It. Yeah, I really enjoyed that too. Yeah, I really loved that. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Stupid Bitches Say What. We hope you enjoyed our recap of the events that piqued our interests over May, June in 2022.
Tune in to our next episode for True Crime, where Sean discusses the horrific case of the Aberdeen Abattoir butcher, Catherine Knight, and I cover the mysterious unsolved case of the 1977 Easy Street murders. Bye, stupid bitches. Good Thanks night, for tuning in. Bitches. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe, share. Tell your mates, god damn it. Tell your mates, god damn it. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, that stupid bitch. Mm hmm. He's a stupid bitch. What a stupid bitch. That stupid bitch.